Hello, today is Wednesday, December 19th, and we're doing another news episode. This story got what's hardware, design, Tesla. This is, this is business. Tesla. Business and... Uh, Hardware's in here. Well, I guess it's hardware news, but it's... Business. About the business of the hardware. One story about space and then design. Yeah. And we'll start off, of course, last week we talked about the big leak from AMD. <laughs> and it seems like maybe, maybe after all of the, the press that that got, some people were furiously building PowerPoints <laughs> over at the blue team. Anantech has this amazing article that you should check out. It is very long. It is insanely long. But Intel hosted something called Architecture Day 2018. It's like the future of the core Intel GPUs, the 10 nanometer process hybrid x86. There is more than we can get into there. Uh, but... It's a lot of information about Intel's new processors and the whole 10 nanometer process. And if you read this, it looks like Intel is going to go chiplets just like AMD. And they're going to have like a fancy x86 core and then some Atomish cores. And then they're going to package all that up. And they're going to have a smart interposer to connect it all that handles I.O. Which, I mean, this seems really, really similar to AMD. They talked a little bit about 7 nanometer, uh, Intel 7 nanometer process, not TSMCs and and all this kind of stuff, but reading between the lines here, I think that Intel is overstating what they have for 10 nanometer. And one of the clues for that is when is from the article, Intel was talking about their 10 nanometer Xeon. And they're like, look, we have a 10 nanometer, you know, socket 3647 Xeon. It's, it's 10 nanometers, that's a big piece of silicon. And they didn't show it in any kind of operating capacity. So I think Intel was, uh, was sort of misleading there until I see it actually working. Because after the whole Computex thing, so, but it, they did have Roger Koduri and Jim Keller and some of the other people that had been hired away from AMD. So similar to AMD and old AMD people, yeah, it's going to be an interesting future for Intel. The big move was to the cove and away from the lake. <laughs> the sunny cove, 10 nanometer, will be the uh, sort of the you know the flagship for the new CPUs. Deeper, wider, and faster, which again sounds like AMD. Like they're they're, they're taking some architecture cues from AMD. But they're also going to get a new generation of integrated graphics to go along with that. And it is actually going to be on par with some of AMD's offerings. At the low end. Yeah. So maybe Intel integrated graphics won't be as much of a joke anymore. <laughs> as much of a joke. They also did announce all the way up to 7 nanometers. Yeah. So they have a plan. 2021. Will they be able to hit 7? Now, considering how long it's taken them to hit 10, which yeah. they haven't even really. Yeah. Maybe a little uh, optimistic. Yeah, I think that 10 nanometer is basically like they should just not even try and just go for 14 nanometer plus 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 and skip straight to 7 well, they nanometer. Are, they they are, have 7 nanometers on track. They are pretending that this current generation of 10 nanometer and the uh, integrated graphics just didn't happen. I can't, I mean, for like the inter like the large businesses that are trying to buy 3647 Xeons, even on the 14 nanometer process, there's a shortage. Like they literally can't make enough. On 14 nanometer. So 10 nanometer seems like a joke. Well, yesterday we talked about Apple versus Qualcomm. And they're frenemies. And then they started to get back together. But then they, they didn't. And they're mad at each other again. And The whole China ban thing. Where is it all going to end? And Apple wants us to believe it's going to end with this. <laughs> Apple is making its own modem to compete with Qualcomm. So Qualcomm Communications is is what Apple uses. We we talked about the Intel 5G modem, but the the modem from A Intel was kind of dropped at the last minute or changed or something. So A Apple wants to build their own communications modem, but I think Apple is going to be in for a surprise just how hard that is. Maybe they will actually make something like the like the title of that video from ages ago. <laughs> they uh yeah. Apple not proven invented. to be good at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I would go so far as to say they have been proven to be abysmal at that. Like they can't even like the new Mac Mini, the Intel. Like before, like when the Mac Mini came out, there wasn't like the Intel NUC, and now there's the Intel NUC. And rather than like take the NUC and make a better NUC, they literally just screwed it all up. Well, Google has faced some internal dissatisfaction <laughs> to say the least that first, we covered the last few weeks first there was the drone program not happy about that <laughs> dragonfly then dragonfly came along really unhappy about that and so now they've made an announcement that's probably based on all of this don't forget the contractors 
But uh, yeah, Google has pledged to hold off on selling the facial recognition technology that they have. The company says that there's an important policy question that needs to be answered before they unleash this amazing facial recognition technology. They uh-huh. have to let everyone talk, and then they will make sure that they forget about it, and then they'll release it. Yeah, the, the important question is... Exactly how long do we have to wait before they'll forget this? <laughs> so we'll fire we'll... everybody that knows and replace them with temps. After the new year when everyone's trying to, you know, get their fitness on. <laughs> and then they'll... Well, we talked about a lot yesterday about Chinese spying and all the, you know, the Navy and they're stealing all of our stuff. As usual, they're getting blamed. The Marriott Hotel, the Chinese are everywhere. <laughs> but one place that they're not is Supermicro, according to their own internal <laughs> review. Reuters has this article that says, Supermicro review found no malicious chips in motherboards. So again, there was that Bloomberg article. We did a video there on were it. Several, you know they followed up on that like three or four times. Yeah. They kept saying, no, there really is. Yeah. And everyone was like, I don't know. It, if there is something to that chip, it suggests that it's a supply chain issue. So like, one contemplates that if you're on a cargo ship full of thousands of servers coming from mainland China or you know Taiwan or somewhere to the United States that's like a 2 week to 1 month to 6 week journey i mean that's plenty of time to go through the manifest and be like okay this this package this server in this container is going to go to this US customer let's just modify the server on the container ship i mean how you you'd have to do like supply chain stuff like a full audit of the supply chain that hasn't been done yet but this is increasingly looking like bloomberg got some major things wrong but your customers also said they looked at theirs yeah. and didn't find it. Yeah. Of course, they might just not want people to know how bad it was. Who can you trust? The answer is no one. <laughs> trust no one. That's like literally the X-Files, isn't it? But what no, you that's can... how I want to believe. That's what you always have to... Uh-huh. That's the poster. Yeah, they, they actually were encouraging you to trust uh-huh. the theories. The crackpot. Yeah, don't trust the government, but you want to trust all the... Well, we'll be talking about that later. That's the perfect segue into not this story, but a later story about the algorithm. One thing that you can trust is the job market in Austin, Texas. (laughs) Apple's going to build a billion-dollar Austin campus and add thousands of U.S. thousands of U.S. jobs in in this expansion. I don't. I wonder if they're planning to build another giant spaceship donut thing. Well, Austin's like the new hipster city. Like Portland is out. Austin and like San Antonio and all those places. Those are in. It's pretty humid there, though. Yeah, but it was cheaper until all the people started moving there. And mm. now it's getting expensive. And now Apple's building there, so it'll probably have the same problems places like Portland have with bet, real estate. I bet their Mexican restaurants are the bomb. Yeah, I bet they are. <laughs> That's Tex-Mex. That's good. So much chicken and cheese. Oh, man. Has uh, Trump taken credit for this yet? No, not yet. Because it is moving jobs to America. Right? <laughs> you know he's going to. Well, they are a trillion-dollar company, right? I mean, They did pay $30 billion in taxes. I think, or maybe it was $30 million, to move the money back to the U.S. to do all this. Neat. So, I'm sure that'll be used efficiently by our government. <laughs> well, speaking of Google, the Google CEO had to testify, and he talked about a variety of topics. And one of them is maybe a little disturbing when it comes to YouTube content. <laughs> it's like the I want to believe thing I was just talking about. So the Google CEO has admitted that the company must better address the spread of conspiracy theories on YouTube. It, if you actually listen to everything that he was telling the senators, a lot of the time that like they were telling him bad things and he's like, that's the algorithm. And then they were telling him good things and he's like, that is also the algorithm. But this would seem, and he was saying that right now, humans do not manipulate the algorithm at all. And some of the people in the, in the video said, it's like, I don't believe you that humans do not manipulate the algorithm. That seems impossible. And this seems to be one place where the at least some of those policymakers were right because YouTube, in order to be better, is going to have to do this non-algorithmically, which... They kind of already do, though. Yeah. Like, if you ever see certain things, like if you look up, like, moon landing and then watch a video, it'll actually pull up, like, a little Wikipedia link at the bottom, and it's like, learn more about the moon landing on Wikipedia. This is a real thing, like... I wonder if that's algorithmic, though, because a lot of the conspiracy... It could be. A lot of the conspiracy theories, like, you don't know it's a conspiracy theory until somebody flags it as such, and then you can get those things. Could be. Have you guys ever heard of Frazzle Drip? I hadn't either. Apparently, Frazzle Drip expounds on uh, Pizzagate, uh, but oh, blames man. Hillary Clinton and uh, what's Anthony Weiner's wife's name? Huma. Yeah. 
Aberdeen or something like that, that they uh, not only sexually assaulted young girls, but drank their blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. I knew that. That was in there. But I'd never, I mean, before I read that article, I'd never heard of that. Yeah, no, so, I didn't. That that article quickly wandered into made up news territory so fast. I was just like, yeah. Did you get a little bit like whiplash? Like, oh. But that was an example of what they were talking about. Yeah. I and mean, they weren't yeah. saying that actually happened. Yeah. They're saying that was one of the things. They're just that, implying. It was the implication. <laughs> well, did you see the CNET recording? I mean, the winks and the eye nudges. It could be legit now. Now, I think Hillary Clinton knows damn well that you don't drink the blood, you have to <laughs> inject it. So I don't believe that at all. That's Didn't we do news. a story about that nonsense where like that was the thing that they were trying to convince people to do for anti-aging? Yeah. There was the best one I've seen. And I don't know how true it is, but I think she tweeted was um, the, the woman from uh, those werewolf movies. She's the, she's a vampire and she's in love with the world. Oh. She's gorgeous. Mm. Like one of the best looking women in the world. Wait. Anyway. I'll say Twilight, but that's not. Uh, Kate Beckinsale. Have you never seen those movies? I haven't, I haven't even seen this one. She's she's the vampire, and she never mind. Someone <laughs> someone the in the comments is, will tell us. No, no, but but I mean, she's like just famous for her beauty. I would think that you would know her for that. Anyway, mm. she supposedly got a facial treatment that was composed of an elixir rendered from young boys' removed foreskins. Wow. Ew. <laughs> yeah. Ew is right. <laughs> now that we're all feeling a little bit icky, let's well, move on to the next story. Well, Microsoft, when it comes to Microsoft's updates, it's a little bit of a gamble. <laughs> and you might say that it's a little bit of a gamble like playing Russian roulette with three chambers loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to firmware updates, it seems like that's still true. <laughs> Microsoft has acknowledged the Surface Pro 4 firmware issues and offers replacements. So if you have a broken Surface Pro 4 display thanks to a faulty firmware update, Microsoft is letting you know that, hey, well, we're going to fix it. This is touchscreen problems. This is display problems. Otherwise, apparently the firmware, something goes wrong with it, and they just have to replace the device, which is surprising that they screwed up a firmware update that badly. Well, not really. I mean, let's be honest. It's Microsoft. I like that you corrected yourself like mid-sentence there. You're like, eh. Well, we, we love to talk about Tesla and uh, Mr. Elon Musk around here. <laughs> and this is a very, Business Insider has a very interesting article that, I think he's he definitely disputes it, but will he dispute it to the level of like litigation or an attack like that? Because it doesn't paint him in a very <laughs> good light. Business Insider reports that Tesla employees were reportedly told not to walk past Elon Musk's desk because of his wild firing rampages, and they go on to describe some of those wild firing rampages. And the and you should read that because it's fun. But the thing that's even more fun is Tesla's response to that, which reads like it was actually written by Elon Musk. I would never do oh, such a thing. I'm sure it was. <laughs> but yeah, they claimed that some days he would show up and just announce that he was... Oh! There's Boiler Snake. Boiler Snake actually defends Musk. <laughs> he, he hates it when we say bad things about Musk. He's like, no, he's a visionary. He's going to take us to Mars. Well, this snake really actually wants to go to Mars, which is weird. <laughs> well, you know, they're the same sort of sandy, coppery color. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. That's why he chose that color. But yeah, the <laughs> Musk apparently uh, would just take... This was during the production hell time. And when he would get frustrated, he would take it out on the underlings. And it got so bad that they wouldn't walk past his desk. Yeah. Because he, he might, might literally just like pick you out. And yeah, like a stray well, bullet. One of the stories uh, talks about how... It, like. He was confused by something, and he just went into some sort of impotent rage and fired the guy. And the guy was like, I'm trying to help you, but I don't understand it what was, you're wasn't asking. Wasn't it literally like a vending machine was broken? Something. Some kind of thing. But yeah. his rage is not impotent. <laughs> it's quite potent. Yeah. He really is just, you know, playing with people's lives. Well, it's not potent in the way of, like, solving problems. Like, will firing somebody actually solve the problem, or is it just random? Pretty random. Well, we also talked about, back during the... Uh, you know, the, the wild days where Tesla was in the news every week. One of the things we talked about was the uh, remanufactured batteries and the, uh, you know, the graveyard of Tesla's. Remember those pictures and the drone photos and stuff like that? Well, it turned out one guy 
was behind a lot of that quote unquote whistleblowing. We talked about him several times. And Musk has a, a response to that as well. CNBC is saying that Tesla is seeking $167 million in damages from that former employee. Um, and this is uh, stock prices, apparently. Like, I tried to read this and understand, like, how did that guy cause $167 million of damage? Musk actually refers to him as a saboteur. But it seems to be that they're really talking about the stock price in the lawsuit. But the stock price rebounded in every case. Yeah. So... I mean, wasn't Musk himself the greatest saboteur of the stock price? One would think. <laughs> what does he owe? <laughs> but I, I don't know how all this played out, but I, that guy was definitely part of like the, the short seller brigade. And his predictions did not come true because a lot of his predictions were... That like, they were never going to hit that Model 3 production. And the stock was just going to tumble. Yeah. So Now, I'm not saying he wasn't right about the batteries or all the other stuff, but... Whatever is or is not true from all that, they seem to have gotten through it, for now at least. And they're making Model 3s at a pretty brisk pace and making a lot of money from it because the initial investment uh, period is over. Well, Robinhood is a super popular app because it lets you trade stocks and even options now at no cost, no commission cost for the trades. How did they do it? They steal your data, but they're upfront <laughs> about stealing your data. And man, it's probably not a terrible trade-off if you're a big stock trader. But they've also announced some new features that got them into a little bit of trouble, maybe. Uh, they announced uh, new checking services where you can have an interest-bearing checking account. Remember those? Those were all the rage in the late 80s and early 90s. And then pretty much disappeared like the dinosaur. 3% interest on a checking account. Except... Uh, that might be a savings account. Or a savings account. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the FDIC was like, wait a minute. And they're like, no, no, no. We're not... A, this is not a deposit account. We have this other insurance. But the other insurance company was like, yeah, we're not insuring that. Hold on there, buckaroo. Yeah. Now, SIPC will insure if you deposit money for your securities trading. But if you're depositing money just for checking and savings, they want no part of that. Yeah. So... Eh, this they, seemed like a cool feature that Robin Hood was going to roll out, and but maybe you're just not protected in the same way that you would expect if you were using this as a checking and savings account. Yeah, and they have announced, I think, that they're withdrawing it for now, but they seemed confident that they would eventually roll it out. Oh, it's just a paperwork thing with this whole 3%. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> Robin Hood, they actually did a really good job of... Uh, in the early days of Robin Hood, the problem with it... It's not really a problem, but... After you would do a trade, it had to go through the clearinghouse before you could ever use your money again, mm -hmm. which could take like five to seven days. And that's called writing for free because then you'd be spending somebody else's money. Anyway, they got that shortened down a little bit. So they seem to be able to actually work through all this stuff. And just goes to show you that the big uh, trading platforms are fleecing you for so much <laughs> money because it doesn't cost that much to do all that stuff. Well, let's talk about things that don't weigh very much. <laughs> and a record-breaking anorexia. <laughs> laptop Magazine has the new LG Gram. It's the lightest 17-inch laptop ever at just three pounds. Three pounds for a 17-inch laptop with an edge-to-edge -edge screen. I mean, it's going to be smaller than most traditional 17-inch laptops, but at only three pounds, oh, I really want to get one of these and try it. I was less impressed until I realized 17 inch. I was like, oh, that's actually pretty big. Like, and for that weight, that's fantastic. And that is no slouch either. That'll get you an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. You get an additional slot, but of course, adding another SSD is going to add more than weight. three pounds of weight. Not, not much, obviously. Yeah, just so. a few grams. If you're looking to go ultra light, you might not, you might skip, but <laughs> and that will be a uh, 2560 by 1617 inch. So that's pretty good. Impressive. 72 hour, uh, watt hour battery, they said was good for up to 19 hours. So really probably about eight or 10 hours. That's did, impressive. Did that they announce is, a price on that? Uh, I didn't see. I think they... I did not. I don't remember the price. Maybe have not. Oh, 1699. That doesn't seem terrible. Yeah. You know what's going to be really nice is how light that is. For the porch pirates when they take it off your porch <laughs> this holiday season. It's just gonna that be would like, have been a good segue into a later story. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, they're gonna be like, "Is this an empty box?" And then they get it home and they're so excited. They're like, <laughs> "Oh, a laptop!" Yeah. Well, when you get a new laptop, don't install a bunch of crap on it. In fact, it's probably got a bunch of crap on it. You need to uninstall. But one thing that you can get that's not complete garbage is Microsoft 365. Oh. <laughs> Controversial. Com comment time. <laughs> Unless you're gonna install Linux, actually, in which case that would be even better. Yeah, but, uh, but this is well, you know, I mean. Do we want it as a subscription, though? I don't think we do. Microsoft is, uh, yeah. Well, it's mm. Windows 10, Office 365, Skype, Cortana, Outlook Mobile. A lot of that's free. Microsoft 365, they're also planning on including a whole bunch of other stuff. The division that Microsoft has for this, for its end game, I don't see as completely terrible for normal people, except for the whole like data mining aspect and being really abusive and that kind of thing. But Microsoft wants it to be like iCloud so that when you sign into a new device all your stuff just comes and it's good they, they want the same iCloud experience all which, your all your stuff will come except for the settings where you told it to stop spying on you yeah basically I mean you don't even get that between updates <laughs> it's like oh I need to update the virus definitions oh I've updated the virus definitions but now my privacy preferences are reset again what's going on with that well you clearly made some bad choices <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about the the clicking the update button later too. Well, a major milestone in the television world is I, I don't know. I mean, do you think this is the tipping point, or has that already happened? If, I think it's already happened. If the world of television were a patient, this would be like the last bypass. Like we, it's like we, <laughs> you, you just got another bypass. We literally can't do any more bypass surgery. This is like this the, would be another symptom. This developing. the last road marker on the march to death. This is before, <laughs> right before they give you just a basket of morphine and send you to hospice. <laughs> this is full body <laughs> sepsis. <laughs> so the number of streaming shows. That are made shows that are made for streaming is what variety means. Uh, on uh, has surpassed the basic cable for the first time ever. So more shows are made for streaming now than for cable television and broadcast commercial television. And we're not including reality TV shows in that. This was scripted television shows. Now, not to say that reality shows aren't scripted. They are but definitely, but they don't get counted because supposedly people, those people are just doing that stuff and they're not being scripted for it. So a little bit of a caveat, but still. That's a major milestone. It is. Yeah, so... <laughs> it's a major milestone in the death of television. Like, television is not going to become... is not going to be a thing anymore. Like, you know, we still have... With the invention of television, we still have radio. But with internet, the internet is going to supplant television and radio. Well, I think radio has... A niche. It's in your car. And television isn't. Yeah. And it won't be. But now that I can get data in my car... You know, I can just stream from my phone. I never listen to the radio. Oh, see, I listen to the Christmas station this time of year. No. I, Actually, I turned that on December 1st, and I listened to it all through December. So I just bought two Chevy, Chevy vehicles in the last six months. Both of them come with that little brochure. It's like, oh, hey, get your three months of uh, Sirius Satellite Radio. Hell, we'll give you six. Right in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> Not interested. I don't. I don't care if it is free. I don't want it. Well, my mom wanted it for a while, and speaking then I got things, her an iPod, and it was like, nope, over. Speaking of things that are trash, that are going right into the trash. <laughs> Variety has another article that IMAX is shutting down its VR business, closing the remaining three VR centers in Q1. So, IMAX theaters, they were you know sort of a thing. Uh, they made VR theaters, and no one wants to watch VR. Because who wants to be in that sweaty face mask like, that someone else wore in, like 20 minutes ago? I bet they give you like one of those little socks when you try on shoes, <laughs> something like that, right? To they put had, over your head. They had that at the VR booths at Computex. Like you would, you would. It was like a, uh, it was like the toilet thing. You know how like you pull the toilet ring out of a box, and then it's like the the napkin. That's, oh, okay. It was like Seat that, cover. but it was for the for VR goggles, and that was, yeah, but, it was pretty effective. But I effective, but like. When you're trying to like eat popcorn and enjoy a movie, are you always going to be like cognizant of like little edges of paper and? Yeah, but I don't think it was the germophobia that killed it. It was just the fact that it was terrible. People don't care about VR. It's kind of gimmicky, I yeah. think, for a movie. Most uh, movies probably aren't really optimized for it. Well, I I really did think that maybe VR was going to have staying power where, you know, 3D TV didn't, but it's really not catching on. Mm -mm. So I don't know. Maybe we're just not there yet. It's got to be cooler. Well, I think, too, some people get motion sickness as well. That is a big one. Yeah, I've never tried it to know. That would be sad if VR turned out to be the coolest thing ever and then you just get motion sick from it. 
We got what was the game we played? Oh, it was uh, Half Life. I did not originally get uh, when I originally played Half Life uh, and Half Life Two. I did not get motion sick, but I was violently ill. It's after something that. with the FOV. Well, but me and Wendell both got sick. But you got to remember, Half Life was CRT. I wonder if that's related. I bet it is. I'll have to dig up a CRT from the basement. Now, if you if you Google the issue, like lots of people reported that problem. Hmm. Could also be engine conversion because that's not the original original engine. Uh, that's right. Well, speaking of games, I had no clue that Discord, the chat program, sold video games. They do. There's like a home screen. When you turn on Discord, it'll pop up and it'll be like, hey, here's the games we have on sale. I thought well, that was just affiliate links. Who to like knew? Dog. I never actually clicked one, so. <laughs> but good news if you want to sell your game on there because they are now the lowest or, well, highest price in town when it comes to your share of the revenue. They're going to give developers 90% of game revenues for games that they advertise and host and whatever. That's so. in comparison with Steam 70 and uh, Epic's, uh, what was it, 80? 88. Was it 88? Yeah, yeah, 12%. So, I don't know. I've never... I don't think I would purchase a game from Discord. I'm not sure if I would either, but if they if they keep doing like really good things like that, they might. But this doesn't help you at all. It doesn't help, but some people really care about that sort of stuff, so. Well, if you're doing some holiday shopping, I guess maybe this was last year's hot item, but maybe now you finally find one in stock, is the NES and SNES mini consoles. And those have been big sellers for Nintendo. So they did the obvious thing. <laughs> Nintendo warns it's not going to make more retro SNES and NES consoles. <laughs> these are... Just, we can't make enough of these things. They're just selling off the shelves. <laughs> Stop immediately. I, uh, I think that they're doing that on purpose. I think that their whole niche is like games that you loved as a kid and like, you know, you're always pursuing, you know, that feeling again. So it's like they'll, they'll give you that taste and they pull it away. They take it away. <laughs> like the is, Disney vault. It is just a taste because you got what, like, 30 games? Yeah. yeah. Things. And they weren't even the best 30 games. And they keep, they just keep you hooked that way. And then they'll they'll re-release it like a year or two from now, and then they'll release a, a few more games with it, and it's like, well, I have to get <laughs> a that A different now. 30. They'll combine yeah. the NES and the SNES and be like, look, it's the super and the feminist. And they'll make it a different color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, release it in different colors. Or they could stuff. want you to buy the ROMs directly on the internet. Yeah, the virtual console on the Switch is uh, rolling out, or already has probably. So, so. You're, you're taking a dump on them, but I think they're actually, from a business standpoint, not from like a, a consumer friendliness standpoint, business only, they're but being smart. The virtual console games are like five bucks plus. That's a lot. When these are all free? <laughs> Brand equity. Ah, Segway. Huawei. <laughs> Huawei is getting mm. thrown under the bus by T-Mobile and Sprint. Again, yeah. So CNBC, so T-Mobile and Sprint are merging. They're the number three and four well, wireless trying. provider in America. They're trying to get government approval to merge. But they're in the, the mating dance portion. From the four merger. to three. And it's like, oh, is this creating a monopoly? Is this bad for consumers? Well, to try to sweeten the deal with the U.S. government, they said, hey, you know, we've noticed you guys have something going on with Huawei, so... We'll stop carrying Huawei devices if that'll make you guys let us merge. What a strange mating ritual. I don't know if the government has responded to this at all. all. <laughs> but it is an interesting thing to float for, you know, to, for them to get their way. <laughs> I could see Trump being spiteful enough to, to consider that. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, we're going to cost. The, you know, it's like we need American phone companies to, to do stuff, to get all the money. Okay. But do you realize that? Like, making a computer is a global operation. Like, there's some of it's done in China, some of it's done in Germany, some of it's mined from the beaches of North Carolina, some of it, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a worldwide operation. Well, we've got a lot of stuff going into space recently. The old uh, SpaceX rockets are going off like clockwork. They seem to have figured it out. And you've got, uh, you know, evil supervillain Bezos right behind them with his virgin, or his uh, Blue Origin? Blue Origin, yeah. His Blue Origin rockets. But one thing that neither of them have done is to put a human up there. <laughs> well, Virgin Galactic has done that now. They've reached the edge of space at just over 82 kilometers, reported as reported by the BBC. So that's the space plane, and they're going to be taking space tourists to the edge of space in the space plane. Could you say space a couple more times? <laughs> Please, yeah. 
<laughs> they also, you forgot to mention they also took a dummy up in this. So there's two pilots. I imagine there's a pilot in each of these sections. Yeah. And then the dummy uh, simulated the paying customer. He's the, hanging out in that big, cool chamber there. The business model here is space tourism. Now, 80 kilometers is considered where they will give you astronaut wings. The American government, that is. But a lot of people say that 100 kilometers is the edge of space. So Commercial airline traffic is at 30 kilometers. You could say that Virgin didn't go all the way. <laughs> oh, level one. Oh, <sighs> and here we've we enter into the design section. This is it. I, I included this story just because I knew you guys would make fun of it. Well, of course, yeah, it's and the color of the year from Pantone, which is a color swatch library. <laughs> the color, the swatch color library. swatch library. So, this last year's I think was a purpley tone, this year is a living coral. They changed their website. Do you think that uh, this fish was maybe like gently dyed? So that it perfectly fit the color. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was color corrected. In oh, so I'll say color uh, corrected. Probably so, not dyed. Yeah, they've made the entire website and the menus and everything, this living coral. And let's look at their uh, description. Their here. copy is just absolutely fantastic. Krista, can you, is there any chance I, you can read that? No, you're going to have to control this <laughs> for me. I can, I can try. Color is an equalizing lens through which we experience our natural and digital realities. And this is particularly true for living coral. With consumers craving human interaction and social connection, the humanizing and heartwarming qualities displayed by this convivial, is that right? Yeah. Convivial. By the convivial Pantone living coral hit a responsible, no, responsive chord. Mm. Wow. That's, that's just. Well, that's a lot that's of That's a lot of words speech. and I didn't really uh, glean anything out of that. No, what it's like mean? reading an artist's statement. I, I hate it when you're in a meeting like that and it's like just... <laughs> Tell me, give me, give me, give me the color code, like number sign, like now, number I am kind sign, of, number sign, and then some numbers. What the are the numbers? Code. I need some numbers. Now, of course, you know, I'm kind of crapping on this a little bit because it's very pretentious, but you will probably see a lot of these colors start appearing in designs and in like home decor and just everywhere over the next year. Oh, it's so pretty. I, I hope this it. fish gets a lot more uh, work, you know? <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, this was his big break was the Pantone website video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they didn't, I think they talked about, do they have like runners up or anything? No, I don't understand oh, how they the picked past. it. Yeah, here they had go. the past. This year was purple. 2017 was Wait like the green. Wait a minute, how is it purple if, oh, this is the coming year. Yes, 2019 oh, 19. is okay. going to be, well, I, yeah. I feel like, how do you know what the color of the year is before that year has happened? Because Pantone declares that color and then manufacturers are like, <laughs> yes, we'll make everything They're that very, color. like, pink and purple seems to be overrepresented. So right now, in design trends, like that pale pink from 2016, I don't know if they can see it on the screen, that's called millennial pink. You'll see that a lot in web design oh, right now. Okay. Well. That's, that's some interesting trivia for those of you who probably don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> and now on to, now I didn't include the story, but did you guys see that uh, Heart of the Swarm, Blizzard Activision has unexpectedly canceled esports. What? For the Heart of the Swarm? Heart really? of the Swarm will no longer uh -huh. have esports. Interesting. Which will probably lead a lot of people over. To League of Legends. <laughs> because it's in a league of their E own. Yeah, the uh -huh. yeah. So they redid their, their branding, which I I don't think this is effective at all. Like well, I don't if understand. you just look at it, you don't really under you don't have the connection to League of Legends. It's the, it's more about Europe. It's not about League of Legends, it's about European pride. Is that why it's a crown? I I guess. It, it's I, very generic sport. Like this could be any tournament, like this could be something put out by Nike at it kind of looks like the uh, um, Sauron crown from the Lord of the Rings. Movies. Yeah, yeah, his his weird thing that they did in the movies. Oh, oh, this is animated. Look at that. Animated logo is very popular right now. But yeah, I don't. I mean, I think it's fine as an application. I just don't think nothing about it to me really screams League of Legends. But what would though? Oh, I mean, they have a logo. They didn't use any of the oh. branding from the logo. Is oh. this like magic? There are probably abilities in the game, I would think. They could just be things. I'm not sure. What? You know, illustrations. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Draven Blood Blood. Oh. Oh. Serious fonts. <laughs> now, some of these look like they're <laughs> probably cool. more specific. These, yeah. These are definitely characters, right? Yeah. Or abilities of some sort. 
Yeah, League of Legends, mm. not a thing that we care about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't get into esports. But, uh, hey, do, you, do they really? Is this a real thing? Do they no. put these yes. on? Yes, they absolutely do. Wait, it's, in New York? No, well, in like Taiwan. So. Oh. This is Europe. Okay, well. Yeah, this is a European tournament. Well, this is pretty common in design mock-ups. Like, you get, like, fake posters, like a stock image, and then you put in your own posters there, into it. There is stuff like that in Taiwan. What about sure. this? Yes. Is this there real? Is, there is stuff like that in Taiwan. See, but look how small, like, would you know that was anything to do with the League of Legends stuff if you weren't familiar with the branding? I, I would have to already be familiar with the crown. Otherwise, it's going to yeah. be like, I don't know what this is. I mean, I guess if you're super into the game, you're probably... It's probably fine, but is the crown going to be around forever, or because or is it just for this tournament? That's another question. Yeah, if it's like just this year or just this season, that's dumb. It's yeah. really dumb. Of course, the crown is forever, Wendell. <laughs> How could you say that? Long live the queen. <laughs> How old is the queen? Very old. She's she's in her eighties, right? Yeah, gotta be. Yeah, gotta be. That is yeah. it is a testament to the the miracle of modern medicine. She's on that yeah. Hillary Clinton uh, <laughs> blood drinking. No, I was just thinking, you know, she's probably got really great doctors who you are like the, on her butt all the time. You know what the algorithm has trouble with? Sarcasm. The algorithm is like, nope, that's a demonetization right there. That's fake news. We might get it. <laughs> we might get it for mentioning that. Well, if we don't get it for that one, we certainly will for Friday's nonsense section. Oh, the so nonsense. Join us is, then. It's really. Like it's if you're if you're in a bad mood because family's around because of the holidays, you're not gonna want to miss the nonsense episode. And then take a look at some living coral stuff, and you'll be like, "Wow, I feel." Calm what right were some down. of the words this, in that? This humanity soup? is making humanity. Me happy. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's any. What was the other word that was in there? Vivisection? No. No, it was a word that we didn't recognize at first. <laughs> uh, we just read it, and I've already forgotten it. Uh, I know it's a word. new word. We should look it's it up. It's word of the day. I know that word, but yeah, it's uh, convivial. Yeah. So convivial, I think, is like uh, like welcoming you to my home and being a good host. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Convenio in Latin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We will give you a convivial welcome on Friday. Woo! Bye.